for a savior rising. The absence in my heart calls out for his name. And in, in, in a heart that's bleeding, a fire igniting. And only his rising can put out this flame. I wrote a letter toward my master, addressed to your name, addressed to your name. Salawat. This short stanza was from a poem entitled, I Wrote a Letter. It was written by the British poet Nuri Sardar, and it was about his deep uh, longing for the uh, awaited imam and for his, his uh, desire to become a companion of him. Like many of us, he wishes for the return of our imam so that we may be united in this companionship. But before we talk about companionship, we have to understand how are the companions described, the companions of al-Mahdi described to us. And to that point, we look at Imam Sadiq. Within Bahar al-Anwar, one of the most important collections of hadith that we have, Imam Sadiq describes the companions of, of the Imam Mahdi as individuals who pass their nights in worship, their crying during their prayers is like the humming of the honeybee. He goes on further to state that if they are ordered to destroy a city, they will convert it into ruins immediately. Their speed in work is like a rider on the back of a swift horse. Now, as we can see from these uh, descriptions, the companions of al-Mahdi are described as uh, people of unshakable faith and almost uh, superhuman abilities. Now, if you're anything like me, it's a bit intimidating to hear this, right? as in it's a little bit overwhelming to consider individuals who are capable of such, such things. So what we have to do then is we have to ask ourselves, how, how is it that the individuals can get to this point? Because notice that Imam Salah never describes these individuals as infallible, but having reached a certain position, having reached a certain level of piety. So we have to remember the old cliche that Rome wasn't built in a day. This level of piety is attainable, and it has been predicted by the imams before, uh, by the Imam uh, Sadiq. In fact, Imam Sadiq goes on to narrate another hadith, specifically for individuals uh, who desire to be companions of al-Mahdi. He says that for these individuals, you should wait for him and must act with good behavior and modesty. If he, the believer, dies before the appearance of Al-Qa'im, then he will be rewarded like one who has followed him. Then act diligently and await, that this effort and awaiting will give you delight, O you who have found salvation. What Imam Salaf gives us is a simple prescription. But what we have to do is look further into the books of Hadith to, to understand how we can elaborate on this position. And it is with this mindset that we look into the Naj al and into the words of, excuse me, into the words of Imam Mahdi, uh, I'm sorry, Imam Ali. Uh, what I wanted to do was examine, before we examine the idea of companionship with an Imam, I wanted to look at this idea of friendship and companionship with those around us, those in our society. The, those who are closest to us, our parents, our siblings, uh, our community members, our neighbors. And when examining the, the words of the Naj al Imam Ali describes a friend being having three characteristics. He says that a friend cannot be described as a friend unless he, is there, he or she is there for you during three moments. During times of need, when, when, uh, when he is behind your back, and after your death. So the prescription is that if you are to call someone a true friend, he must be there for you during these times. We have to remember this, brothers and sisters, in trying to improve ourselves, in trying to improve our character, in trying to be as best of friends as according to Imam Ali as we can. And so we have to build our resolve and our commitment to, uh, to uh, the people around us before we can even mention being companions of Imam Mahdi and a friend to Imam Mahdi. So to look further now, excuse me, to look further into um, the Naj al so Imam Ali gives us this prescription for people who want to be friends with those in society, correct? 
Now, in order to be friends and companions of an Imam, there is an even greater burden on you. And we look to Imam Ali in his words, when he, after the Battle of Safin, he loses one of his close companions, a man by the name of Suhail bin Hunayf uh, Ansari, who had passed away because of uh, injuries from the battle. When he hears about this news, he says that even if a mountain loves me, it will be crushed into bits. Even if a mountain loves me, it will be crushed into bits. Love for an Imam comes with a price. It comes with tremendous rewards, no doubt, but it comes with a burden. Think of the history of the Shia and the burdens we have had to bear. Think of the companions of Imam Ali and how many of them passed away. Think of the companions of Imam Hussein and all the burdens they had to bear. And think of the, the current Shia and all the atrocities we face for carrying the flag of the Ahlul Bayt. Now, but, but we, we carry this flag and we bear these burdens for the greatest of purposes. We have to recall, again, the words of Imam Sadiq, which I mentioned earlier. The last part of the hadith is one I want to focus on. He states, then act diligently and await that this effort and awaiting will give you delight, O oh, you who have found salvation. <coughs> the flag of the Adil Bayt has been a heavy burden, for, not only for our generation, but for all the generations before us. But it comes with a tremendous reward, and it is confirmed by Imam Sadiq himself. O oh, you who have found salvation, this line is for all of us. Every person in this room, look around you. This line is for them. Oh, you who have found salvation. For as much as we are burdened, we are truly blessed. We are blessed with the awareness and knowledge of the Imam of our time. We're blessed to know that he's ready to perform intercession at our behest. For the smallest and most trivial request to the greatest and most meaningful. He is ready to stand by us. And if we live life as proper Muslims, then Imam Mahdi will undoubtedly be there for us in the afterlife. For we cannot forget the promise of Allah in the Quran. When he states that during the day of judgment, that will be a day, a day that we shall summon all men with their Imams. Brothers and sisters, when this day inevitably arrives, we, Allah will raise us alongside the Imam of our time. We will have the greatest honor of any person living in our era because the man that will be vouching for our salvation, that will be vouching for us during, in front of God, will be the man known as the guided one, the one who will rise, the master of the age, the guardian of the era, the proof of Allah, and ultimately, the upholder of the principles of the household of Muhammad. So brothers and sisters, act with good behavior and modesty. Be a true friend to those around you in the manner that Imam Ali has prescribed. Find happiness in your waiting for the Imam of our time. And most of all, continue to show Allah that you are trying. You're constantly trying to improve yourself and progress your faith. Follow these prescriptions from our infallible Imams and whether in this life or the next, we will be reunited with the Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Thank you very much for your time and the last salawat on behalf of the Imam of our time. Allah.